so after this cow slaughter act the leather that is coming now the the majorly draft cattle that are going for slaughter are buffaloes and not cows whatsoever entity we are praying to they are in the bad condition first of all uh, it's a, sometimes it comes it comes as a shock to them that there is such an act for animals and when they <laughs> <laughs> actually and when they do come to know they're like why don't you settle it yes we agree that they're sentient but a vast majority of population is in indifferent like we we talked earlier it's like we don't even it's not even on our radar to think that they are feeling being it at a society level and now these accidents and maiming is not only confined into dogs uh yeah. because got all the forests we have made highways and in the highways uh, you can see leopards are roaming we are cutting the trees we are encroaching the land we are encroaching the forest so everything has been done by us and this this is what when i say the anthropocentric nature because we only think about ourselves that pdf document he sent me the catalog thing right mm-hmm. um so i went through that and my god i mean it's one of the pain most painful things i've ever read i i mean i i don't want to sound too hyperbolic here it's like i mean i i was i was weeping inside i it was just like not not wanting to sound too dramatic it is really appalling i mean some of the numbers i looked at 80% of the dairies keep cattle tethered all the time 55 or six, nearly 60% of sick animals are used for milking and they use oxytocin to increase milk production and male calves die within 25% of the male calves and so on i shouldn't be too surprised because i grew up seeing all this stuff like to some degree right but then you you guys have put a number to this and i'm thinking this is quite this is quite paradoxical right like on one hand in india right now the temperature the political temperature is that we're going to protect cows we're going to ensure their welfare this is from a very religious sensibility this is on top of our priority we we got to protect cows and meanwhile you guys have pulled data out which reflects a completely different reality yeah. right and and it's like i don't know i mean i have all all sorts of other numbers and then i looked at i was like do uh, how do other countries deal with this what what is like let's look at the european union you know so i, I mean i know it's a high bar but i but i pulled it nonetheless I, I pulled, there's a so you've heard of this the dutch animal welfare policy there's a thing called five freedoms yeah. and they, they they ensure this five freedoms freedom from hunger and thirst discomfort pain injury disease normal behavior express the freedom to express normal behavior it's almost anthropomorphizing right like and free, freedom from fear and distress and i'm thinking and, and of course they have problems too they have problems in enforcing the laws you know people skirt these laws and so on but they have these in place uh, on the other hand in india i was looking at another stat out of nearly half a million animal cruelty cases from 2012 to 2018 less than 2000 were prosecuted or less than 2000 of, of those cases were resulted in arrests and that's less than half a percent you know anyway so i i try to kind of lay that out there what what do you think is going on like are, are we just to sleep at the wheel as as people do we just not see animals or animals in general not just cows is just not having any sentience no therefore no rights i mean what what is the genesis of all of this so we have started with a complicated topic <laughs> <laughs> let's do it <laughs> yeah so but uh, you know if we see india uh, as for the ancient india starting from the history the protection of cows is based on the religious sanctity and it is also you know in the india constitution in under article 48 uh, it is given that slaughter of the cow should be protected from the slaughter and that their breach should be protected so it all comes from there um when india got independence uh, there were a lot of debates happening in the constituent constituent assembly that what how to put the provision regarding cows so uh, earlier the thought was that protection of cows should be a fundamental right but then after discussions it was added under the dpsp directive principles of state policy under article 48 to protect the cows so why dpsp because fundamental rights are enforceable you can go to court to enforce if uh, you can go to the uh, to court to for for a case to protect the cow if you see a cow is being slaughtered but if it is under dpsp so it it becomes like a moral principle and not exactly the right which is enforceable in the court it's it's like moral duty to protect the cows and on based of there are certain dpsps of the states based on these dpsps 
as the time passed, some of them DPSPs have become laws. Laws have been created out of it. And that's how the law regarding cows has come into place. There, there are cow slaughter acts in most of the states of India. There are 28 states and I think around in 20 states the cow slaughter act is there so now the problem is political religious and everything india being a developed country we and also we the religious country or we're, we're developing right or we're, we're yeah, developed we're developing country yeah we are still a developing country so you know there there are a lot, lot of faces to it we are not developed that everything is into place whenever a law comes in most of the developing countries the enforcement of these laws is a major problem just the laws okay. comes but you cannot enforce them so what is happening under this cow slaughter so see in a way if you see it's good okay if you are working for animals and if you re remove it from the religious thing if you're protecting an animal cow okay well and good protect then in the name of protecting it's it's not a fully protection you have made the act but it is not enforceable um you cannot now when a cow has stopped giving milk if it's not a milching cow what will happen to that cow generally what was happening is once the cattle is not giving milk they are they go to the slaughter industry to slaughter oh they do this is yeah. in india yeah this happens in india and in all over the world this oh, wow really yeah so this they're, is they're the not story. let out to like graze out in the open or anything like that they're straight yeah. taken to the slaughterhouse yeah so this is a chain wow. so from there you get the leather and everything okay. then india is the i think one of the best uh, leather industry india has it so after this cow slaughter act the leather that is coming now the the majorly draft cattle that are going for slaughter are buffaloes and not cows. Cows may be going, but they are going, you know, by smuggling or anything, something like that, because now there is prohibition on slaughtering of cows. So if cows are not going for slaughter, what is happening? Because things are not into place, though there are there is cow slaughter act. Now there are policies in almost every state to make goshalas. Goshalas means cow shelters. The, the cow shelters are in bad shape. There are not enough cow shelters and there is no enforcement. So when a cow has stopped giving milk they are on the streets female cows are on the streets and the protection is not for the male cows who are i think ox mm -hmm. female cows Oops. are ox yeah. bulls the protection is not for them so even they are on the street so as we have um, stray animal problem stray dogs and stray, stray cattle so that is why we have stray cattle the some of the cattle are there in the goshalas but if you see the condition I think I don't know the percentage, but it would be very less because most of the goshalas don't have, you know, um, proper care in place. Even there, the cows are congested. It's not clean. So even if you are not, uh, if they are not giving milk and if they are not slaughtered, it doesn't mean that they are in a good condition. Either they are on the streets eating garbage, eating plastic, or they are in the goshalas. So this is something... Uh, this government actually after this government the cow slaughter act came into place in most of the states and in the garb of it the things are not happen in a correct is way. what it's not happening in a correct way if you want okay. to put if you if you if you're praying you pray to the cow you say it's holy and everything and you know the another irony is that what we are whatsoever entity we are praying to they are in the bad condition either they are cows or they are elephants or they are women the 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 things the entities we are praying to they are the thing that are that are right. in the, ironically we, we ill treat the most <laughs> yeah, they are the ill treated the most it's same with the elephants because um elephants are seen as a symbol of god ganesha and uh, but not only in Hindu religion, but like in South India, I think you might be aware that in temples, elephants are used and yes. they are, it's, it's something very terrible. But even in, you know, some processions of another religion also, elephants are used and they are in the worst possible condition. Elephant is a social animal. It is a wild animal who is being used for such thing there is banned baja all over the elephant and psychologically and physically it's not good for an elephant and there are incidents where animals have killed people because mm -hmm. of i have seen videos of that yes yeah so the more you pray the more you the more ill treatment is there yeah this, yeah this is the irony um um but but even uh, why why cow, cow slaughter act it is also because of the vote to who the uh, majority of voters and it is so culturally 
inbuilt even not only cows like people think it is okay to use even elephants for such things they think this is our culture and tradition so what is needed what is needed is the education to educate these people people who have enough money they, they don't even care about anything so for votes this community is vote and things happen because if uh, we also work a lot on elephants and we keep sending representations to stop using elephants to stop taming wild elephants into captivity to stop using elephants in temples but you know if government passes any such order there will be a lot of hue and cry from the community from the right. temple side and it's not easy for them to end it so yeah, I Okay, okay. I, I wanted to cover this part a little bit later, but you brought it up early. I, I, to your point earlier that this is the this is a problem that's I guess perpetuated by the lower income class because they're wooed by politicians and there's ignorance and things like that. Um, I'd like to maybe make my counterpoint or push back on that is that well, I grew up as a middle class kid, lower middle class kid in Bangalore. And I'm so embarrassed, Varnika, to admit that the way I treated my dog, we had pet, I mean, I had dogs, pet dogs growing up, and he was confined to a space 24 7 and this was very normalized when other people visited nobody nobody's jaws dropped you know i mean if, if if this happened in america people would be like calling you know animal welfare immediately some kind of abuse or some i would be held accountable but this was very normalized this is bangalore this is urban society this is very middle class people and i was i mean i was going to look looking at animal sentience like maybe mm -hmm. it's really my my intuitions was that Maybe it's related to animal sentience. Maybe we don't take animals seriously because we don't think they're sentient. And it is, there's this research that pulled up from the um, NIH, I pulled up kind of a credible research and I'll post it here, is that they did all kinds of studies and there's just everything from animals expressing, uh, experiencing emotion to pain, to st strategizing, to generosity, to all the, the, the entire spectrum of emotions that humans experience. And you could see it in their eyes. And I'm ex so embarrassed that I dealt with my animals like that. And I had to learn coming to America, this was the much more enlightened ideas about animals and life and things like that. Of course, this America has its own problems with animal farming and things like that. And but is it just a matter that we've just not as a society collectively thought about animals as somewhat equals just because they can't communicate in words in English, we've sort of made them extremely second class, third class citizens. And this is just like we're lacking the enlightenment. I think it is very true because people just don't understand how to treat them. Like now, if I see in my friend circle, uh, my friends who who have, they keep them in a wonderful condition. Yeah. But still, I, I see we get a lot of cases. It's very normal to have a dog and just keep that dog in the balcony for the whole day, whether it's raining or it's right. sun or it's sunny people just don't care and they there is no this uh, this awareness this education is not there that animals as you are saying that they are sentient that they also been i think i am thinking that in developing countries and with such a population in india the number one population we are so engrossed still with our own problems that we still have the ten tendency to not to you know think about animals even um like if I if I just talk about the developed countries, the history of the developed countries, because they have come a long way. Right. So in the starting, uh, why in developed countries there are no stray dogs? So I'm talking about very old days. So what what had happened there? They actually killed these stray dogs. They were I and in US they were shooted. Stray dogs were killed. Then slowly they understood that they are sentient and this is wrong. And then laws and policies came into place and then they were enforced. So in India. Uh, dogs are not killed cruelty cases do take place but legally you know they are not killed by a legal order that kill the bunch of dogs and even if such an order is there it is it has always been objected and cases have mm -hmm. been gone into court so this is something that has not happened um and we are like parted within a section of society some of the section thing understand the animal sentience their dignity and then there is this another section with those who are totally against animals they just don't care it's kind of divided and this dilemma, just apathetic and indifferent to the animals that's yeah, they're totally they just... indifferent to animals yeah like uh if you see in hindu household 
cows are prayed um, in many households uh, they are called kamdhenu in the indian kitchens you will see a photo of a cow um, but nobody do anything when they see a cow eating plastic or garbage mm. is just praying 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 so i think they they don't they don't understand what they are doing and it's only the lack of education and awareness awareness what i understand this is something has to be taught from the childhood parents should teach their child or it is, should be also taught in the school there has to be awareness camps for police and normal public so only then it will change otherwise people are so engrossed with they are just uh, earning money that is the main purpose of life earning money. what would you say what would you say to people who push back against what you said and said well look on the maslow hierarchy india is still we're still on the bottom two rungs we're still trying to get you know social security or like safety net like we're still trying to earn money if we don't earn money we don't have time for respecting animals is that a fallacy is that just like those are not mutually exclusive like i anyway I, that's the argument most people at least i foresee most people making back to me is that look we're a poor country we're barely able to make ends meet and so animal rights could just kind of fall at the bottom of the priority list it does actually it is kind of true i don't know how much truth is there in it but from what i see there is little truth in it um because you know we are we are looking for a uh, for a better uh, to to be in a better place to go outside india have a good life this is what all is there in our mind to have a good lifestyle to and leave india <laughs> many youngsters are leaving india nowadays i think i know i know i i'm just underlining what you were saying that's all what are you than me i don't i don't want to be labeled as the guy who's saying these things who's this grand so many of my friends who are into it during the covid yeah. time, half of them have left india even my sister yeah. is in germany so and actually the animal sentience animal welfare is something at the bottom uh, and i can say that because as working for animal welfare and animal protection laws when we deal with the government agencies or the courts this is this is the response that we get and many times uh, oh. you know the funding is so less for the animal protection from the government and uh, in some of the cases if you go to court uh, generally court uh, has a good response when the case is filed for animals but in some of the cases uh, i have heard the benches saying that we have lot of pendency and you keep coming with the cases regarding animals we do not have time for this in one or two cases this has been said because the pendency of cases is low there is, there are less number of judges even the seats are vacant so there are so many other issues that are going on the animal welfare is like at the bottom that is, is animal, our animal uh, cruelty cases tried in the same courts as civilian trials you be, i think you will be shocked to hear i know that in us So there are uh, trials tri- trials go on for animal protection laws but here we do have for prevention of cruelty to animals act but as you said i think only half of the percent of the cruelty cases goes to court right so uh, in some cases results in arrest it, only half a percent results in arrest yeah, yeah half of the percent because for cruelty cases you have to go to the district courts uh, district courts high courts and supreme courts there is this hierarchy uh, so you have to go to district courts and before district courts if it's a criminal case you have to file the first information report to the police so first stage police is just not bothered <laughs> to file a case in a animal cruelty case and you mean even, like they won't even register a case they won't entertain they won't even write an fir they don't why it's... why wouldn't they what what's what's their decision because they are so overburdened first of all uh, it's uh, sometimes it comes it comes as a shock to them that there is such an act for animals and when they <laughs> <laughs> actually and when they do come to know they are like why don't you settle it and because uh, the prevention of cruelty to animals act is a weak act the offense under its the the punishment and fine is so less that even the police says that why don't you settle it but there are of course some uh serious cases like killing of an animal or rape of an animal in such cases with added pressure police do register firs and some of the cases we have got them registered but uh, after getting them registered and till going to the courts it's a long process and i think only half of a percent goes like you know if you have abandoned your dog or if you have uh, if you are keeping your pet animal in a cage for such cases no cases are registered at all so they the the police won't even entertain you what you're saying they won't they can entertain you with added pressure if ngos come and you go in a group of 6 to 7 people or you 
um, get engaged with you know with some of the politicians and get okay. like me Gandhi is a big name so sometimes she interferes in such cases mm -hmm. then it gets done so like this otherwise very less and recently uh, I think you will be shocked to know it's a total different so criminal justice system has kind of changed in india in first july 2024 we have changed three criminal laws there there is a huge amendment that has come in place and we have changed our colonial era criminal justice system criminal laws and under it uh there was the section 377 which was which made bestiality an offense that is raping an animal and in the new amending version it has been removed why so is that we, we don't know so we sent many representations you as a lawyer uh are, we just don't know it's just shocking oh we uh, we we are, we are thinking that one of the reason could be that there is a, another draft amendment of prevention to cruelty to animals which is pending and in that draft sexual abuse against animals has been covered but it's been 4 to 5 years it has not been passed from the parliament it has not been passed so it's like sitting on the table and when this uh, bharatiya nyay sanhita in place of indian penal code when the bill came out we sent a lot of representations to the government to not to do it, but ultimately it it got removed and now if there is a case of animal rape so there is no particular offense under which you will file the case you will file the case under section 325 which is a uh, maiming of an animal it is not rape of an animal or sexual crime against animal. so but we are working towards it we are sure that it will come will be added but yeah, yeah i guess I, I, what is your like as an activist lawyer is that accurate to call you an activist lawyer i i think not an activist lawyer you can just call me an animal protection lawyer okay as an animal protection lawyer obviously you're fighting for more animal protections and fighting for prevention of abuse to these animals and so on what what is sort of the things that you're doing um to counter this it sounds like a mountain of a problem this is not yeah. a small problem this is a huge problem that affects the entire country so uh, it's better you know not to go into a lot of activism because government don't like even that so the better to go the legal way send representations which we have done government has not accepted it so the final recourse is to go to the courts file a case ask the court uh, that this has been done because a legal remedy has been taken away from the uh, from the animals so this will happen soon this is what the okay or the other or the other approach which is societal enlightenment if we could elect candidates or parties that actually have this on their platform which which actually takes animal rights seriously and i mean i, I know i'm portraying some kind of utopia vision here but i guess i'm saying is that if we the other way to do all of this would be if we had a more enlightened society We'd add, we, we would have more enlightened folks who would stand for elections and then we would elect these guys into the parliament so they can draft laws to protect animals. Is that the other? That is the other, another way that is little difficult because actually we have written on the same issue. We have written to some of the member of the parliament from different parties whom we came to know are little compassionate towards animals. But as of now, it cannot be done because we have the the party who is in the power right now because they have to do it uh, because um, it will take another five years for the election to come yeah i mean i'm, I'm thinking like this is not a problem that I, my personal my two senses that I, I don't get the sense that we're going to be able to solve this entirely legally this has to be a holistic approach this has to be a bottom up and a top down where society needs to get enlightened we need to look at the real like data like the like here's the thing that really shocks me is that okay so there's research done this is 2012 the paper i pulled out was for 2012 from the national institute of health in the in the us um talking about animal sentience so 2012 to 2024 12 years have passed if animals in america have been if we've studied them and deduced that they are sentient in a lot of different ways it should be a universal fact there, there is no interpretations of me thinking Oh, animals in India are less sentient. You know what I mean? Like this should have been like this should have once we did it in, in one part of the world, it should be immediate universal knowledge. It's not. And once you grasp with the idea that animals are sentient, we we are. I mean, they they can experience all these states of suffering and pain and psychological suffering and all of these things. Then it's a no brainer, right? Like it's like, what are we doing? We're treating 
our fellow inhabitants of this planet so poorly, we're going to have a day of reckoning. See, I mean, I we're already having true. some sort of reckoning, but this is going to be even worse if we keep ignoring it. You know, I think um, there is no deny that animals are sentient. People are aware of it. It's, I think it's but obvious if you you keep seeing there are stray animals everywhere in India. And by just by seeing, you can say that they are sentient. It's no, but, just... but, but, but I guess what I'm saying, Vernika, just to just to clear up yes we agree that they're sentient but a vast majority of population is in indifferent like we we talked earlier it's like we don't even it's not even on our radar to think that they are feeling being yeah the reason is because they think that animals are for our use right. this is how all this got started and this is the reason why animals are property and why mm. so many cases now and this is the reason why animal rights is coming into place so that some rights are given to animals and the property status is removed because un unless animals remains the property of humans they will be treated like sure because this is anthro anthropocentric this is the reason whatever the laws are made laws are made uh by humans and they make it for our use so if you think um, a company is a person it is an artificial person uh, in india idols are person in some of the country yacht and ships are person in dubai uh, there is this robot who has been given a status of a person so we have created artificial persons because humans it's the it's, it's for it's our advantage yeah but a sentient being is a property because we think that we can use them and they will remain pro because they will remain property because we want to use them and that is why that's the reason from animal welfare we are moving to animal rights so that certain rights can be given to animals okay. and when they are not property then we cannot use this is one of the upcoming and, and for animal rights to be effective we need uh, like uh, lawyers like yourself who really care and push the keep pushing this this is not like it's not something like you're going to get a lot of assistance in the courts. It has to be, you have to keep pushing the issue. Yeah, and it is legally very difficult. You know, law emerges as the society changes. As the society right. changes, law also changes. But now there are so many nitty gritties to it. Uh, I don't know if you have heard of the Cecilia case from Argentina. Cecilia, who was a monkey. So no, I haven't. So it's a supreme... I think I may be wrong. So it's a, a Supreme Court case from Argentina who or this Cecilia monkey has been given rights. And from a zoo, he was transferred to a rehabilitation center. And court actually in this case recognized that monkey is sentient and it has legal rights and he has right to live with dignity and he cannot live his whole life in a zoo in in a cage in such a condition and that's how cecilia was transferred so such cases are coming into place even in us uh, the non human right project nhrp they are working it on lot uh, basically on elephants and chimpanzee but till now they have not been successful but uh, but I know they are, they keep working on it. There's this elephant happy from Bronx Zoo for which they had filed the case, but they were not successful because there are so many legality, um, writ petitions, the court says that these writ petitions are only for people, for persons, animal is not a person. How can you apply it on animals? There are so many things. Okay. The, the whole There's still challenges even in other countries and even in developed countries. Yeah even in the abroad countries and even in India, this is going on. So, you know, um, in, in the year 2014, AWBI versus Nagaraja, this is the landmark case from India, which is known worldwide, wherein, you know, it was said that animals, animals, it, the five freedoms were recognized, right to live with dignity for animals was recognized. And this case uh, become like a magna carta for animal rights in India. And Justice Radha Krishnan passed this order. And from there, but but here in india till now uh, we don't have cases where a single animal had been given you know rights and because of those rights that animal has been saved from a cage or somewhere uh, but theoretically if you read these judgments they sound good but again mm. the practicality of it is very difficult and that's so, most likely because our as a society we've kind of turned the other way is the society and you know also when you file these cases we understand it because we have done the research but we have to explain to the judge what we are saying you know judges are like clueless what you are saying what you are talking about <laughs> <laughs> even even the judges are like they're part of that zeitgeist which is like 
Yes. What do you mean this animal is sentient? Exactly. So I I will give you an example. Um, uh, from uh, last week we had filed a new case in Delhi High Court. Fiapu had filed a new case in Delhi High Court, which is uh, on elephants under the Wildlife Protection Act. Uh, it is on elephant is a wild animal. And exception has been created only for the ele elephants that they can be used for religious or any other purpose. No other wild animal in India can be used like this except elephants. Okay, now why? Because elephants are used, they are used in temples, they are used in processions. So they have to make this exception. But uh, we were okay till the religious, for religious purposes, because we had to be okay. We are not okay, but you know, we... Uh, cannot ask we cannot uh, go contrary to each and every decision of the government that becomes problematic but they added religious or any other purpose now this any other purpose could be, could be anything so right. this is what we challenged in the delhi high court and you know what we heard and we asked for quashing of this so what the judge said so he said that religious or any other purpose uh, would be interpreted as as judum generis that is together with the religious the any other purpose would be something related to the religious purpose that what would be the any other purpose but after that he said he gave example what could be that any other purpose so he said like using elephants in asian games so so you know so arguments just keep going on we have to make them understand that using elephants for elephant uh, for asian games in these ceremonies this is something we is not normal animal anymore but in the eyes of judge he he was thinking it is okay then we gave another examples like begging or using in circuses to those he said yeah those i understand ca cannot be used but for such cultural and tradition ele elephants can be used so it depends a lot on the thinking of society also and judges are also part of the society and the good orders that are generally passed you know that i was talking about justice radha krishnan and there is one more judge i forgetting his name uh, rake hisam sharma so these are the judges who have continuously passed orders in favor of animals now why because is their thinking they un they understand that animals are sent. that is they why. personally have that belief yeah they personally have that so it this affects a lot and they are part of the society we just cannot say oh as a judge you think like this the whole society thinks like this it's very what, normal what would you say yeah what would you say uh i guess i don't know if you can talk to this but 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 indian uh, hindu scriptures let's stick to that for now like what is the most compelling piece of like religious writing that affords animals an equal equal right of or, or a life of dignity i think they are upanishads and vedas the oldest hindu scriptures wherein it has been said and it has also been quoted in the judgment that animals are not lower to humans and they are equal it is written in sanskrit okay. but such writings are there and these writings you know we uh, continuously quote uh, that, that that's what we say that india is a place of hinduism jainism buddhism even buddhism talks about ahimsa and in jainism there is lot lot of protection is given to animals and in india there are a lot of gens you know if you see the people working best for the cows in india they are the jain people they work a lot for they have good cow shelters and they donate a lot for uh, for cattle so all these things actually we do say even you know when we have to protect any dog or street dog we do take the religious stand that you know that uh, a dog is a is an animal of uh, of yamraj i think the god of death so he's actually yeah. and there are temples there are two temples even in new delhi where hmm. dogs are you know prayed so oh really okay yeah so with this uh, with this yamraj uh, bhair of temple it is called okay and so we sometimes we this, uh, in such cruelty cases of dogs we say that why are you doing this do you even know that what what dog is and even you know during the mahabharat times uh, times when yudhishthir was going to the heaven it was only the dog there was one dog who accompanied yudhishthir mm. 
and nobody else so dog was the companion of yudhishthir while he was going to heaven so there are such stories but people just i think pick and choose say, yeah but it's also like i feel like at some level when you speak about dogs it's like a societal it's like we've also kind of not defined what cruelty means it doesn't mean a one on one cruelty right like at, at a society level we i mean humans evolved we created automobiles and we never we forgot to mention we forgot to have communion with animals and say hey look we're going to have these metal boxes running at 100 miles an hour or 80 miles an hour on a on a road you better stay out like we never like took them into consideration because we right. have this feeling that we have dominion over animals right like we said hey we have the whole control over this planet we're going to do whatever and these metal boxes going at 50 100 kilometers per hour they're going to hit you and you you see stray dogs maimed a lot you see limping dogs dogs who are limbless and so on and it's like it's a societal we drop the ball at a society level it's not just individual beliefs it at a society level and now these accidents and maiming is not only confined to dogs uh yeah. because got all the forests we have made highways and in the highways uh, you can see leopards are roaming and then an accident takes place um now it has become kind of a common sight that you know uh, elephants are roaming somewhere near the village they right. come out right the forest and in gujarat there is uh, in gujarat the um, there is this gir forest where there are quite a huge number of lions so even that area becomes dangerous and sometimes the lions come out but it's not the it's it's we have created this pro- this problem right. animals are not the one who shall, who should be punished we are cutting the trees we are encroaching the land we are encroaching the forest so everything has been done by us and this this is what when i say the anthropocentric nature because we only think about ourselves we are not thinking of animals and first we will create the highways and then after creating the highways now we are creating some what is called some region below the highway so that animals can pass from there such things are underpasses yeah passes yeah underpasses oh. there are uh, in uttarakhand the himalaya region of the country there are a lot of cases where you know le- leopards come out of the forest and yeah. they they either they are eating the street dogs or they take away the human child and then of course if an animal is taking the human child then of course it is a prob- it is problematic and they're going to find it and slaughter it and then kill it or... and kill because then here he here comes the problem of animal rights and human rights then right. of course the human rights most of the time prevails because nobody is ready to understand why that leopard has come out because we have encroached the land and everything and we have and even if the land has been in encroach there is no system in place there is no boundary has been created so that the animals at least do not come out so and, and how how is that handled in the west you think it's 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 much better like where we you know animals i mean animals do routinely get killed on the highways and things like that deer for example in the midwest um but is there like a legislation where they say are there legislations in place in the west i guess i can look this up too um where it's like you you have to allocate x amount of you know square miles for animal you know conservation and so on for for their own like it, i'm guessing that there's some sort of provision like that in the us i think such provision i am not sure but i was reading an article and now such provisions are actually coming before making a highway they also they are also creating an a proper underpass so that the animals can cross from there because they have uh learned from the past experiences what is happening so now they are coming up with yeah. such guidelines or legislation yeah i, I guess uh, your personal views on this um vernika is that like what like you you're dealing with something this is i feel like this is a this is this could be a life challenge for you right like if i'm not mistaken this is this this is a mountain of a problem this is multifaceted you're dealing with it from a legal perspective you're you're going at it from a legal perspective but then there's the societal enlightenment perspective do you have any thoughts like how could we change the narrative here i actually do and that is why when you were calling me you know a legal activist i said please do yeah. not call me an please don't call me that yeah <laughs> uh because you know um the animal activists or, or even if they are advocates they think emotionally they actually become emotional so what i have my strategy is i i always think as an advocate and not to not to get too emotional because if i to get too emotional then i won't be able to think rationally yeah. emotion should not come in between and i have and have to take care of both the rights animals and humans you know when when i am drafting or when i am writing i am specific you know whatever 
एनिमल इश्यूज आई एम पुटिंग डाउन आई एम पुटिंग डाउन कीपिंग इन कीपिंग इन माइंड द राइट ऑफ ह्यूम ऑल्सो एंड हाउ it can become a holistic approach so this is uh, because the because the other cases and when i deal with the animal activists i see how emotional they get i see okay. how emotional they get and uh, that is actually little troubling also because if as emotional as you are it hurts you and it also takes a toll on you so i don't know what was so your you are probably not able to think straight from a legal yeah, perspective yeah. rationally what was the question exactly <laughs> no that was i mean you gave a good answer like you you're saying you, we got to balance our passion for for animals or or our empathy for animals with actual concrete legislation like we 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 have to kind of we can't let our emotions kind of bleed into this and just but people that take you seriously but that also plays a role emotions also play a crucial role you know so like when um, when there are cruelty cases then then i would say both the sides should think rationally but if you are working in a policy to change the law to change something then always think rationally because if you show your emotions inside the court court is not bothered about it court court is right. bothered about law court is bothered about society they have to see the holistic approach but having said that um the activists also help us a lot uh, because from their emotions and you know what they are saying they make us understand lot of other things that maybe uh, when we are thinking rationally we are not able to understand so maybe the points that they are putting emotionally we can put them in a strategic manner to okay. make the court understand and also if there is no activism i think there wouldn't be any change also for any change you need some revolution i think so okay every department has their work to do thing but what i do is because i am a um, practicing advocate and for any case not even this i have learned from my past because before delving into animal laws i was doing other kind of laws i did matrimonial ipr so i so i know that a lawyer cannot become personal yeah that's a good question like how did you get into this space like you you know from from doing all of that into animal rights i think um uh, when i started i was i was searching for what should i do i started with intellectual property rights actually i was into trademark and copyrights uh, that was my subject in llm and i really liked it so and from there i got an opportunity to be to do clerkship under a, a high court judge in delhi high court and then from there i moved to litigation i did some human rights cases i wanted to go into litigation and then doing all these things in between i got kind of lost i didn't know what i was doing because i wasn't enjoying it because once you are in litigation litigation is a very demanding it's okay. quite demanding physically and mentally both if you want to succeed uh, there are no timings as such uh, you have to work on weekends and it was taking a toll on me so i took a little break to think what i want and 6 years back i saw this you know posting that <clears throat> looking for animal lawyer and i just applied in fiapo and i then i started to enjoy it so I fate think, had it that you you will work with animal rights okay okay fate had it and it wasn't like in my mind oh uh, i like i want to do animal litigation or something like that um but it gave me a way and and i enjoy it and now i am enjoying it a lot oh my god that god <laughs> i thank god for that <laughs> yeah, that so happy accident sort of thing happened um, yeah I mean, it's not an accident so and yeah it's been a great journey so this is how and i think uh, my past experience also taught me a lot so how to deal with these cases sure, and sure. so oh, it's it was it's a win win situation you know because it's just not only about loving animals you have to also i would be very practical to say that you have to take care of your career also at right. what side you are going either you can do pro bono animal cases and keep on doing something else on the side uh, because working in in a ngo is not a corporate job it's yeah. not like you are paying really handsomely or something like that so you have to take care of lot of things um but that's why slowly slowly i was thinking that can i make it a make it my full time career what about money and everything and slowly slowly i think it was fate everything turned out well and i'm kind of full time into it and i'm doing good now wow and uh, and today at this stage i'm also you know i have given some lectures to law colleges to law students on animal laws um i uh, in nepal this year in january 2024 uh, i went to give two lectures in three bhuvan colleges of three bhuvan university in kathmandu 
on animal mm-hmm. laws and now with julie palais so um, i did my llm in animal laws from louis and clark college oregon portland mm-hmm. and from there this journey started my peer my colleague one of my colleague was julie and she contacted me that uh, as you are from india she was working in nepal on stray dogs issue she said as nepal and india are culturally same so i would like you to come to nepal and give some lectures and the goal is to create a animal law course for the university so we both collaborated and i went there with julie and gave a few lectures there and today and now we are in process of creating a course there that's wonderful that's awesome congratulations and more power to you varnika on on doing that so actually there are um even if career wise if i have to tell students you know it's just not that you can do you will do litigation there are a lot of opportunities that you can work on you can teach it um and you can just help you can do pro bono cases even if you are in corporate you have good money just do it as pro bono but they should understand that there is a law regarding animals and once they once these younger generation understand it then i think half of the problem and especially in law colleges because they can make the change through law yeah um gosh i had a bunch of questions for you and i kind of i'm drawing a blank um i think i moved into another direction <laughs> oh no you were i mean i'm i'm just soaking it all in i i love what whatever you're saying and and i i'm trying to think like you know this this almost requires a societal level enlightenment on one hand and then we need legal folks like you to kind of push this um i was yeah as i was thinking um uh, i've been watching some of the trials the supreme court trials on youtube you know and some of the cases that they that they try and you know uh, the chief justice of india chandrachud saying you know he's he has a certain training he comes from harvard all of these things american sensibilities i guess and interpretation of the law and and justice and so forth and you could sort of see that in the way he he talks and the way he conducts the session and i i'm kind of confused and i could never ask a legal person this maybe you could answer this there's a group of like lawyers standing in the well somewhere in the in the in the court and then there's there's a chain of communication going back and forth somebody's handing a piece of paper and what's going on i'm just so confused so you know generally the cases that comes into supreme court because india supreme court has a huge jurisdiction it's not like the supreme court of us where the jurisdiction is limited i think very few cases reach the supreme court of us okay. in it's in washington the federal because a state has their own supreme court and then the country has one supreme court but in india the the supreme there are number of cases and it has a huge number of their the appeals can go writ petitions can go interim interim orders can be passed by the supreme court and so and they many of these matters are really high stake matters so even if i give you example of animal cases only we file writ petitions so uh, on behalf of animals an organization can represent the animal and like today see i have filed a case petition, sorry to interrupt you a writ petition is a written petition yeah, given written to the court is, is kind of an original jurisdiction of high court of india and supreme court of india where you can directly approach these okay. high level courts and not going to the district courts you can straight go to the court and oh yeah so you must have heard of habeas corpus i think no i haven't i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> no worries so there are five kind of writs and so we can directly go to the supreme court or either high okay. court these are for the basically these writs are filed um, when there is an infringement of a fundamental right so these writs are filed directly in. and uh, so like today uh, i have filed a case so the even other parties can file the case and these cases get tagged along so pet- there could be 10 to 11 petitioners and in the similar way there can be 10 to 11 respondents that is the other party against whom we have filed the case so when a case is listed they all come together so that is why lot of advocate you will see because each party has a separate advocate who oh. represents it and that is why you you will see so many people and the other advocates who are sitting behind they are waiting for their own cases because there is always a cause list that is listed one case gets over another advocates come up but in one case you can you can have 10 to 15 parties also and every party most of the time have separate lawyers and when they are arguing so you know because sometimes not everything is filed sometimes they are just giving 
at the time of the argument some papers uh, to refer to the judges so that's all they keep giving is that the best way to do it varnika it seems so inefficient <laughs> it seems so noisy and just disorganized uh, so yeah this is the system <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i won't push you further on that uh, the other question i want to ask you re- regarding like i keep hearing this over and over is that we have a serious shortage of judges in the country there's a huge backlog of pending cases and so on so justice denied is i'm sorry justice delayed is justice denied and so we're not we're that is we're still stuck at the ground floor we i mean we need to fix this yesterday what what are your thoughts on that are we doing something in that direction are we hiring more judges what are we what are we doing to remedy this so we are doing but i think things are moving slowly like one of the positive thing that came out during the pandemic was uh, online hearing started earlier there was no online hearing so okay. now uh, i would say we have good number of e courts and we can attend the hearing are they equivalent to the regular court yeah they are equivalent to regular courts and we can also attend hearing through e courts by the link so that is something uh, okay the positive change but yeah regarding pendency of cases and number of judges yes there are less number of judges i actually i have forgotten the data there is some data that one judge has this much of pendency and which is actually huge um but this is you know something the uh, something regarding government machinery that is why you know when we say that the animal issue is at the bottom because there are so many issues to take care of much more the, serious things uh, but, not much more serious they just serious things that had to be dealt with yesterday with. and there is so much pendency i don't know what to say about it that why the vacancies are not being filled oh uh, there are vac- vacancies it's just that they're not filled i thought there we, we there are vacancies sometimes they are not filled they are filled late but even um, if there is uh, the vacancies complete i would say still more posts should come out but you know more number of judges then you have to give more number of salary government have to give the more salary to them and then it may be a burden on the on the government to pay such number of government servants so it's a whole circle so that this is the problem of one of the of the developing economies i would say and the law enforcement is a huge problem it's yeah. a huge problem there's so many uh, court orders are passed uh, but they are it's it's not necessary that all are enforced and enforcing the court or orders is another task you have to file the contempt petition then but nobody has you know that much time to give to a right. single a single case because there is lot of other pendencies that is going on if there had been less number of cases then a good amount of time could be given and it would be better for the enforcement but the pendency is so huge and things go they have they have to take care of everything yeah i mean we often think once there's a a judgment then yeah we, there's victory and we won the case or whatever but we're we're not talking about the enforcement of it which is that if you're not abiding by that law you are liable by the legally to you know yes. be arrested or whatever and it's like that really happens Happen. that happens and the legality is such like if i give you the example of have you heard of jolikattu you you must have you are from karnataka yes, yes 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 so this uh, awbi versus nagaraja 2014 judgment that i was talking about in this case jolikattu was actually banned jolikattu and kambala uh, and bullock cart race in maharashtra these sports were banned because it was said that they are per se uh, per these sports are per se cruel and hence they are contrary to the prevention of cruelty to animals act and hence they were banned uh, now the it doesn't end here this matter go, has been has went till 2023 in between what happened these states because jalikattu is such a huge thing in tamil nadu it's, it's their culture tradition and to ban it is is not that easy um the state of tamil nadu and karnataka they came up with the state amendments under the pca and they said see we have made these rules so and so rules and if we follow these rules there would be no cruelty in these jalikattu or kambala events and then again this case came to the court because the animal organizations they challenged these state amendments that once a ban has been come into place now they are coming with the state amendments so it was on the constitution uh, constitution that whether can they do it it is legal or not and 
it ended it was either 8th may 2023 or 9th may 2023 it was the constitutional bench five judges heard it and jellica 2 was actually allowed it was banned in 2014 and then 2023 it was allowed all these bullet sports were allowed they said that if these rules the ban said if these rules are followed then there is no cruelty and if and if they are not followed then you can take the recourse of the law you can file the complaint where they are not followed and let it happen so it just keep going on and on and on there, there are many other legalities in it but i don't want to go into that because that's not the uh, gist of uh, today's podcast but yeah oh yeah any any discussion is good discussion i mean i, I was actually uh... I was chatting with um, bio artist uh, a week ago, maybe a little more than a week ago. And one of the points he was making was that, you know, our um, in, in Spain, there was this bullfighting that mm. happens and it's pretty nasty. The bulls get hurt and then there's all this pain and suffering that happens to the animal. And then he noticed and, and you know, people were watching it. People were paying money to watch the sport and things like that. And then he said they they the activists went after it and they said, you know, this is kind of cruel or whatever. I'm butchering the story probably, but the essence of it is still true. Mm -hmm. So they slowly started phasing it out. People had an aversion to the sport and things like that. But they also started noticing that the attitudes towards like buying meat on a grocery store also changed. There was not so much of a repulsion towards just buying because you're so removed from animal, animal suffering mm -hmm. that you're sort of like, yeah, it's okay. It's just like meat that shows up at your grocery. You know, it's like, who cares? You know, there's this kind of like you 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 develop this apathy because you're not mm. like really witnessing that kind of cruelty to animals. Yes. But maybe, that's probably just a Western thing. I, I don't know. It's It sounds like we're, we're, we're I don't know, Vernika. It's, it sounds like we're just in <laughs> like maybe, I mean, I can, I, I grew up in the 80s and 90s in India, right? Like we, I was never, this is Bangalore, India. I was never taught about animal rights in or, or animal sentience in any serious way and I, I get the sense that we're still not there I, I get the sense yeah. we're still not there I think I think that's a that's a it seems like a low-hanging fruit to me that if mm -hmm. we introduce enough I don't know the curriculum or anything like that but somewhere uh, uh, the part of training uh, somewhere part of being a human being or uh, understanding what it means to be human animals have to be absolutely part of that equation and you are absolutely right and this has that's why I think we have to teach to the younger generation if such a curriculum yeah. comes into the schools and animal animal laws become a major part of the law schools that it, it is also you know when when i did law i also didn't know that there is some law called pca act because it was never taught but now at least we have reached the place uh, uh, that uh, this subject can be at least chosen it can be a not a mandatory subject but now slowly slowly students are getting aware and um uh, also like it, it starts from home so while i was growing up I had a, we both like grew up together and I think somehow unconsciously I knew how to behave with animals because of that. And I have seen the people who have grow, grown up with animals and who never had pets when they were growing up. There's a difference in understanding of the, of the animals. They don't. Uh, they cannot relate people who have grown up in farms they can relate more to the yeah. animals people who have not in the same environment and if as a parent a correct teaching is given to the kid and even if something of this sort is starts in the school it is going to make a huge difference the next generation that comes up i think they would be uh, compassionate towards animals to a large extent that okay. is education is the way to the way to go yeah. It seems like that seems to be the theme of many of the podcasts uh, I've been having lately is that, you know, it's it's a education for the young. We need to start early and it's, that could have more impact. Um, yeah. Well, Vanika, I don't want to take more of your time. I know it's late for you. Um, I appreciate your time so much. I, I learned a lot. Thank you for calling me and having me here. Like, I enjoyed it. and. Oh my God, are you kidding? This is such a privilege. I am so honored that you you sat with me. I'm truly, truly okay. honored. I'm, I'm very serious. Thank you. And and uh, please keep doing what you're doing uh, with more power and more vigor. And I'll do my best to keep amplifying voices like yours. And um, yeah, well, I guess let's keep collaborating. I have, uh, if, if you're up for it, I would absolutely be honored to be collaborating with you. You know, there's, there's a lot of power of 
AI that's coming out and I've been using it. I've been developing applications and stuff like that a lot. I, I have like so much hope that this technology can alleviate so much of human and animal suffering in so many different ways. So I'm, 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 I am want to collect, kind of bounce ideas off of you, how we could use technology in like concrete ways, you know, to, to solve some of these problems. And I, I, I mean, reach out to me and I've build, been building a lot of applications. It's become easy. That's the big that's the big highlight for me is that any average programmer or engineer like myself can develop some really heavy duty stuff because the technology is so powerful at such a low level of barrier of entry. Um, and I've been making this point pretty regularly. And I, I mean, I could I could show you some of the things I'm actually looking to make money off of it now. Um, that's the next kind of step I'm taking. So I'm I'm offering my help and services to this whole project. Okay. <laughs> so, like, thank problem. you so much for having and telling about yourself and and even thinking about such a topic because yeah. it's just not the younger generation. I think as more people will, you know, listen to it, people just get shocked to listen to yeah. such oh, this also happens. Oh yeah, we do this to animals. We never thought of it. So such a reaction. I, I had the same reaction. I had the same reaction. I'm as ignorant as anybody else. <laughs> No, yes, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna act like I'm better than anybody else. I I was as ignorant and unenlightened. Not that I'm enlightened now. I just I had the same reaction. Like, oh my I god, was, what's that? Once upon a time, even I was. I also learned in these okay. six years, and there's okay. a lot to know about. But yeah. yeah, so thank you so much, and yeah. let's stay in touch. And if we can collaborate on something else, that would be great. Absolutely, I'd be honored to to help out. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye.